Hi, my name's Natasha and I work at Circle. At Circle, our goal is to keep the rivers and wetlands and the plants and animals that live there as healthy as possible. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the things that we do at school and at home that mean that the rivers and wetlands aren't as clean and healthy as they could be. Water bodies are areas of land that fill with water. Some water bodies that you might know about if you live in Western Australia are the Swan River, which is the big river that flows through Perth that you can see on your screen, and the Canning River, which flows into the Swan River. We also have lots of wetlands and lakes. Can you think of a river, wetland or lake near you? Do you ever visit these rivers and wetlands? If you do, what do you like to do there? Some of the things that I know people in Perth like to do include swimming, boating, skiing, walking, watching fireworks, fishing, picnicking and bird watching. If we want to be able to continue to enjoy our rivers and wetlands in these ways, we need to make sure they are kept healthy. More importantly, we need to keep them working in a healthy way so that all of the plants and animals that live there can continue to have a clean environment to call home. To understand how our water bodies such as rivers and wetlands become dirty and unhealthy, we need to understand how they become filled with water. To understand this, we need to know what a catchment is. On your screen is a model of a catchment. If you were to pretend to be the rain falling from the clouds and poured water anywhere on this catchment, it would make its way into a creek, dam or river and ultimately into the ocean. A catchment is an area of land that collects water for a water body such as a river, lake, wetland or dam. In Perth, that means it's an area of land that supplies water to one of our water bodies such as the Swan or Canning Rivers. Any rain that falls within the Swan Canning catchment will flow into the Swan or Canning Rivers and eventually into the ocean. A basic way to understand how catchments work is to cup your hand and think about where the water flows when you put your hand under a running tap. Your fingers and thumb are like the hills, whilst your palm is like the valley and the creases in your palm are the rivers. Water will flow down the hills, or your fingers and thumb, into your palm or the valleys and make its way into the creases, which are the rivers. Your hand has now become a catchment. Rain that falls from the clouds will make its way through the catchment into rivers and wetlands in one of three ways. The first way is through the soil. Groundwater is underground water that is held in the soil. Think about rain that falls on your school oval. It doesn't just stay on top of the ground, does it? It soaks into the ground. Some of it will be used by the grass or other plants, but the rest will make its way into the groundwater and move slowly through the soil towards the river or wetlands. When you are at the beach, you will see groundwater when you dig a hole next to the water. If you're close enough to the water and dig a deep enough hole, Soon the water in the sand next to your hole will fill the hole with water. This is groundwater moving through the sand. The second way water gets into our rivers and wetlands is through runoff. When rain falls from the sky, sometimes it falls directly into creeks and streams that flow into the river, or it falls on the land and flows over the ground into the river or wetland. The third way water makes its way into rivers and wetlands is through drains on your street, which are called stormwater drains. Clean water comes into your house and you use it to wash yourself, wash your clothes and dishes, drink, cook with, go to the toilet and water the garden. The dirty water or wastewater leaves your house through pipes. Depending on where you live, it either gets taken through the sewage system to a wastewater treatment plant or it goes into a septic tank underneath your house. At the wastewater treatment plant, it is treated, which means it is made as clean as possible before being pumped out into the ocean. In a septic tank, it gets treated and then flows into the groundwater. The water that flows through the drains on your street, however, 
goes through the stormwater system of drains, which empty into the nearest river or wetland without being treated or cleaned at all. Have you ever lost your ball down the drain on your street? That ball would have gone with the water down the drain and popped out in a river or wetland nearby. Unfortunately, water isn't the only thing that can make its way into our water bodies through the groundwater, runoff or the drains. Think about the oil and rubbish that ends up on our roads and will be flushed down the drain the next time it rains. Or the fertiliser and sprays that people put on their lawns and gardens to help them grow or to get rid of weeds and insects. Those chemicals can make their way into the groundwater and then into the river or wetland. What about those lawn clippings that people blow off their lawn onto the road? Or the sand from a house being built that ends up on the road? All of these things can pollute our water bodies and many of them contain nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. All plants and animals need nutrients. Nutrients are good as they help us grow. We get nutrients from the food we eat and nutrients are in soil and water but in very small amounts. Plants get nutrients from water. Animals get nutrients when they eat plants or other animals. Too many nutrients in our water bodies cause algae to grow and too much algae causes lots of problems. So the answer to the question of whether nutrients are good or bad depends on how much there is. Small amounts of nutrients allow us to live, whilst large amounts of nutrients threaten life. In Perth, half of all the nutrients in our rivers and wetlands comes from farms outside the city, but the rest comes from the suburbs of Perth, from fertilisers people put on their lawns and gardens to feed their plants, leakages from septic tanks, detergents, bread fed to water birds, soil, grass clippings, leaves, especially from trees that lose their leaves all at once, and dog poop. So, who knows what algae is? Algae is a plant that grows naturally in our water body. You may have seen it in rivers, lakes, wetlands, or drains. Small amounts of algae are good as they provide a source of food for many animals that like eating plants, like tadpoles. Unfortunately, algae is not like us. It doesn't stop consuming nutrients when it's full. The more nutrients we give it, the more it'll grow. It particularly likes the warmer months when temperatures are higher, the sun is bright, and the water in the river or wetland is not moving too much. Eventually, if it has enough warm weather, sunshine, calm water, and lots of nutrients, algae can bloom and cover large areas of a river or wetland. Imagine you are a plant at the bottom of a lake and the roof of your house is the algae. What bright object can you not see up in the sky because your roof, or the algae, is in the way? If you said the sun, you would be right, and if a plant can't see the sun, then it can't make enough energy to grow and it will eventually die. Also, as the algae that covers a wetland or river dies and breaks down, it uses up the oxygen in the water, meaning that fish and other water animals that use oxygen from the water won't be able to breathe. If there are no plants, then a lot of the animals that eat the plants won't have anything to eat. If there are no fish, then a lot of the animals that eat the fish will go hungry. So algal blooms can soon cause all plants and animals in a water body to die. Or if they are an animal like a turtle that breathes oxygen from the air like us, they will move away from the area because they will have nothing to eat. So algae blooms are not good as they stop plants in the water from seeing the sun and stop animals in the water from being able to breathe, meaning they can die. Certain types of algae also hurt humans and animals if swallowed and give them rushes if they touch it. You won't know if it's a toxic type of algae or not, so it's better not to touch any algae. Algae also makes our rivers and wetlands look awful, and as the algae dies, it smells really bad, meaning we won't want to visit these places if there is a bloom, so it will stop us from using them for the things we enjoy doing. So what can we do to prevent algae blooms? As the overuse of fertiliser is the number one cause of algae blooms, the best way of reducing algae blooms is to reduce our use of fertilisers. One way to do that is to plant native species or plants that grow naturally here in Perth. Native plants like our soil, which means we don't need to add fertiliser to get them to grow well. Another way to prevent algae blooms is to not put too much fertiliser on your grass or lawn. 
and only put it on in the seasons of spring and autumn, which is when the grass is growing and will use up the nutrients in the fertiliser and it's not too hot or too rainy. This means that the fertiliser won't be washed off the lawn down the drain and the nutrients won't make their way into the groundwater, leading to algae blooms. Other ways of preventing algae blooms include making sure that you don't blow things like soil, grass clippings or fertiliser onto the road and down the street drain. The road is not a rubbish bin. When you mow the lawn, if you leave the grass clippings on the surface of the lawn, they will actually act as a natural fertiliser as they'll add nutrients to the soil as they die and break down, meaning you won't have to add other fertilisers. If you don't want to leave your clippings on the lawn, do the right thing and put them in your compost bin. In your home, you should always use phosphorus free detergents, as regardless of whether you are connected to the sewage system or a septic tank, some of your wastewater is going to make its way into one of our water bodies, and whether that's the ocean or a river, the plants and animals will appreciate not having to live in a polluted or dirty home. Many detergents are labelled with the symbol NP, and this means that they contain no phosphorus. Phosphorus is one of the nutrients that algae loves to consume. So get your parents to look for products with this symbol when they go shopping. If the product does contain phosphorus, it might have a P symbol on it. Try not to buy products that display this symbol. Not all products will advertise that they contain phosphorus, so just because they don't have this symbol on them doesn't mean they are phosphorus free. If you want to wash your car, the best place to do it is at a car wash where they recycle the water. If you want to wash it yourself, do it on the grass so that if you are using a car washing detergent, it will at least fertilise the grass. Better yet, don't use any detergent. Use a fibre mitt, some water and some elbow grease to clean your car instead. Don't ever wash your car using detergent on the driveway as all the soap and nutrients will end up down the street drain and feeding algae. When walking your dog or even at home, ensure that you pick up its poop. Most parks have doggy do disposal bags on offer or better yet, take some newspaper with you. Once you have picked up your dog's poop, be sure to put it in a bin. Dog poop, like all poop, contains large amounts of nutrients such as phosphorus. And number twos from pets, including dogs and cats, are actually the number two cause of algal blooms in the urban area. When going on a walk to the park, don't be tempted to feed the water birds bread. Feeding bread to water birds is a bit like feeding them fast food. When they only eat bread, they don't eat their natural food and this can cause malnutrition and diseases such as botulism, as they aren't getting the right balance of nutrients. They can then die from these diseases, or if the supply of bread stops, they can die of starvation. Bread also contains large amounts of the nutrient phosphorus. If left to break down in waterways or pooped out by birds that eat it, it can cause algae blooms. One loaf of bread contains enough phosphorus to make a volume of water the size of a backyard swimming pool nutrient rich which will result in an algae bloom. As well as doing your bit to prevent nutrients from entering our water bodies, you can also help to prevent other types of pollutants from causing problems by keeping your car well maintained to prevent petrol, oil and other chemicals from leaking onto the road, limiting your use of chemicals in and around the home, school or workplace, and disposing of your waste properly. So let's think about what we have learnt today. We all now know that small amounts of nutrients help life, whilst large amounts of nutrients threaten life. Too many nutrients entering our water bodies cause algae to bloom, which means plants and animals die and we are unable to use water bodies in the ways that we enjoy. Finally, what we should have learnt is that we all cause nutrients to enter our water bodies and as such, we all need to try to reduce the amount of nutrients making their way into our rivers and wetlands through our catchments. For more information, visit Circle's website at www.circle.org.au forward slash publications. Under the Phosphorus Awareness Project Publications heading, you will find some great information about being nutrient aware. Under the Phosphorus Awareness Project School Resources heading, you will find lots of school resources, including worksheets and activities. Thank you.